Okay, Houston, right. we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston, we don't have a problem. Today, we want to talk about rotational motion. How does an object move that's moving in rotation? So here we have the bicycle wheel traveling in a circle. And before, when we've talked about how fast something moves, we've really talked about how it moves when it's on the outside of the circle, so on the outside of the wheel. But that creates a conundrum in that if you think about it for a moment, you know, the distance around a circle is 2 pi r, and we can figure out how many revolutions happening per second, but the speed inside the circle is different than the speed outside the circle. So that creates a bit of a conundrum. So as the wheel rotates, like I said, it's just going to go faster on the outside. To illustrate that, let's think that we have our two cool cars here. We have one on the inside of the circle and one on the outside of the circle. And so as it rotates, as you can see, and maybe you can't quite see, but the red one is going through a larger circle, so therefore, and they're moving, let's say, you know, one revolution every second. If they're moving one revolution every second, then the red car is traveling through a greater distance, so he would have a higher velocity. So how do we deal with that in physics? Because we also want to say that basically they're both revolving at the same rate, right? You know, once every second or once every two seconds or whatever I just said. It's moving at the same angular rate, but not at the same actual velocity. So to really understand this, then what we need is to think about, here's, here's our issue, right? We've got something moving in a circle, but in the middle of the circle, they are moving slow because this distance is smaller than this distance, even though they may be rotating, you know, like a bicycle wheel, right? When the bicycle wheel rotates, right, it rotates at, you know, one revolution every second or whatever it might be, but that means that in the middle it's moving slower than on the outside. So how do we accommodate for that is we have a new term, and that is called the angular velocity. Now, before we can learn about the angular velocity, I'll explain that in a moment, it's important to just do some sort of mathy things, okay? It turns out that when you're working with a circle, if you recall from math class, you've probably been in pre-calculus or some class like that, is, is that if we have a circle, right here, this is zero degrees, right? This is 90 degrees. This is 270 degrees, oh, 180 degrees. This is 270 degrees, etc. But there's another way that uh, uh, mathematicians like to use, and actually physicists too. We can also say that a circle going around is also 2 pi. This right here at 90 degrees is pi over 2. This is pi and this is 3 pi over 2. Now this 2 pi is measured in a unit called a radian. So chem or physicists, pardon me, we like to play around with radians. So if I wanted to say, if I'm at right here, right, if I'm at this spot, halfway in between, this would be 45 degrees, how many radians is this? This would be pi over 4 radians. And of course, this would be pi over 2 radians, pi radians, et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of more of a complete thing, and it's, it's how the scientists measure. So this is called, so let's kind of summarize. We've got something called angular displacement. And that's, that's this, right? Pi over 4, pi over 2. So it's, it's the angle displaced, and that's the symbol theta, and the measure is in radians. This is the unit. All right, now to angular velocity, if you think about it for a moment, velocity is distance over time, right? Our, from previous, velocity is distance over time, right? So, but now we're not measuring the distance, right? Because this is gonna travel a shorter distance than this will. So what we do is we say, and it's a funny looking W, that's the symbol for angular velocity, W is equal to theta over time. So, or this will be radians per second. And it turns out that we can also change the 
velocity. So if I start out slow on the wheel, and then it gets faster and faster and faster, it probably is moving at constant velocity now. But there is a point where you can also have, I'll bet you can figure this out, you can also have angular acceleration. And angular acceleration is this symbol here, the Greek letter sigma, and that's the change in the angular velocity divided by the change in time. Or you can say theta over t squared, or this will be in radians, unit-wise, per second squared. Or we just say rad per second squared. So as you do problems tonight on the homework, as you're working on these questions, you're going to discover that you're really going to have these sort of three equations you have to play with. More on how we use this in a subsequent video. But when we have rotational motion, these are your three equations, but you've got to play the radian game. And down the road, you're going to want to probably get your calculator switched into radians. So depending on which calculator you have, you may need to uh, convert it from degrees to radians in your calculator. So uh, Houston, we don't have a problem. We will see you in class.